Hello guys and welcome back to the Ride Belt Waxing and UK One Wheel Workshop. So tonight I'm going to bring to you something slightly different that I mentioned in my previous hoodie slash t-shirt video when you are RW. Looks cool, I must admit, it looks cool. Um, my Classic Mini, 1990, 1977 Mark III Classic Mini. Now it has had a multitude of, um, of looks, should I say, in its lifetime. As you can see from the pictures behind me, different wheel arches, different wheels, plenty of different interiors um, and a major overhaul should I say I think it's back in 2004 but I'm not going to give too much away please stay tuned obviously by the way thank you ever so much for my recent subscribers if you do like what you see and obviously you want to hook up on my rally burner build videos and my bench builds my ski waxing etc etc hit that like button hit that subscribe button more importantly i'm nearly at 600 subscribers i can't believe it i can't believe there's 600 people that actually like me for a start um i would really really appreciate it so no further ado let's get into it i'm going to take you through my mini from driving interior exterior and just talk about basically my car um if there's anything you do need to know though or you want to know then hit me up in the comments i'll be more than happy to let you know my knowledge of the car has dwindled a little bit because I haven't really touched and played with it for quite a few years, um, but I still own it from 16 to the current day today. So anyway, I'm going on. Please stay tuned. Let's take a look at my 1977 Mark III Classic Mini. OK, guys, this is my lovely 1977 Mini uh, 1330cc um, Mark III. So. Let's take you a quick walk around uh, my car. So this is a car that I've had since I was the age of 16. Um, it's been my pride and joy, and it's also been in my family uh, for a lot longer than that. Obviously, uh, before I had it, my parents had it, my brother had it, and then I got hold of it and turned it into this. It's had many a look over its time. Um, the car itself was featured in Mini Magazine in May 2000, sorry, in 1999, and again, then in Mini World in January 2005. The car itself was painted. Um, I had it, I suppose myself, I restored this. Last time I restored it was uh, 2004, around May time, 2004. Um, and then I revamped the interior in 2009. So if you were to go back to the Mini World magazine in January, you'll see a whole different interior. I had Recaro seats in it, uh, a big sound system, uh, different door cards, etc. Um, I didn't actually have these wheel arches, MIG wheels, uh, MIG wheel arches, uh, mini MIG wheel arches, or the 10 inch force racing alloys. Um, I had a, another force racing wheel, but it was a slightly, uh, I think it was on a Mark II um, wheel arch kit setup that I had. So I uh, had chrome bumpers, bumper overriders, but I've changed that for what we've got here today. So I just thought I'd share this with you. So a quick look around the car. We've got these uh, more modern. Um, a xenon headlights with a color coded ring around it i'll show you a little quick video in the top right hand corner so you can see what those headlights are all about about we've got the full mark one chrome front grille the deletion of the bonnet badge two bonnet catches um, keeping that bonnet down with all the bonnet release mechanism that's obviously been removed we've got this lovely carbon fiber front bumper which then bleeds into the carbon fiber on the wheel arches just there if you want to follow me on instagram then i'm retro mini 1330 then do check me out also on my uh, windscreen strip just there um so you've got the 10 inch force racing one nut wheel conversion along with the wheels we're running the yokohama 16570a10 um, these are the uh, i think these are the 032R. They're the nearest to slick tyres you can get here in the UK with a very minimal tread, extremely soft, phenomenal on grip, which we all know that the minis are great for grip anyway. We've got some carbon fibre exterior door mirrors just there. And coming around to the back, speed rail badge obviously uh we've gone over for the mark three rear lights to the mark one lights just because i felt it kept in keeping with the front grille so i did a conversion on that um 
back in 2004. We've got negative camber on front and rear, and it's fully adjustable. We've got the, I think the DSN or DNS boot hinges, fully anodized and lightweight. Carbon rear bumper, carbon fiber number plate cover into the rear. Just to remind you there again with the Instagram, we've got a kill power cutoff switch, which is just there. Electric fuel pump. And that was the original wheel that you can see just in there that I was actually running prior to going over to the uh, matte finished 8x10 mini MIG kind of style wheel. Again, we've got a new Yokohama on that one. The oversized tank and a reverse rubber boot trip finisher, which we finished to the aperture here of the boot, opposed to having it actually on the boot lid itself. We've got a full Manaflow exhaust system, which is just there. And we had a one-off paint job on the roof. Now this wasn't painted with the modern paint, this was all old school and this was an absolute nightmare. An absolute nightmare to paint. Um, we had a double reverse mask all this up and we went for a slightly darker green because I didn't want it to be too shouty that had this old, old school way of like, the checkered roof. But it's enough for those people that love a little bit of old school that can pick it up. But very smooth to touch, there's no ridges on here. Like again, it was an absolute pink to paint, but we got it down. There's a couple of dings and dents on the car. There's a little bit of bleeding, obviously some corrosion coming through, which I know of. But then again, the car's over 40 years old now and it's fully tax exempt, which is the best thing about it. So let's take a quick look inside. Okay, so onto the interior, really. Uh, the interior is uh, very, very, very minimalistic, very much like the outside of the car. At the end of the day, like I say, it's over 40 years old. There is no gizmos and gadgets. I would eventually love to uh, get Owen uh, in Wales, Owen Fabrication, to strip this car, rebuild it, put a full race MIG cage in it and make it a proper, a proper beast. But for my budget and the time I've had it, this is pretty much what I've uh, done with it. So we've got the black headlining. We've got the, I suppose, a track day uh, rear view mirror just up there to give me maximum visibility. Um, we've got the full roll cage in there with some padding just for my head uh, into the rear just here. We've got carbon fiber rear uh, door cards mounted. We've got the pockets all cut out just to make uh, obviously access in the rear a lot easier. We've got the mounts just here for the seat harnesses that go into the boot. We've got the full powder coated grey seat frames. Um, with quick easy access and that just bolts straight through to the floor with the same plate the bottom side for plenty of strength and rigidity god forbid i ever did have an accident in this but we've got no heater we've got no radio it literally is twist and go we've got the straight cut gearbox which i absolutely love the sound of we've got the omp flat bottom steering wheel to aid getting in and out because the driver's seat is slightly higher than the passenger seat purely and simply for my comfort We've got the oversized Speedwell pedal just there for obviously acceleration. We've still got the wipers and the indicators on the stalks, um, but we've got the beautiful anodized silver lightweight door handles on the carbon fiber door cards. Which I think you'd agree, it looks stunning. We've got the Luke three point harnesses into the composite carbon fiber seats and now these seats don't have an immense amount of padding in them but they're actually really really comfortable they really do hold you in and i think as an interior i quite like the minimali minimalistic uh, look that this gives so let's take a quick look under the bonnet okay so before taking a quick look at the engine bay I thought I'd take you on a quick spin around my local town just to 
warm up the tyres, get the oil back around the oil pump and around all the bits and bobs within the engine and also for you to experience what it's like to be inside a very small car on these modern day roads with these very big vehicles but also to enjoy the beautiful sound of the straight cut gearbox and my nice 1330 hill climb slash race engine um, which Tupman Minis of Newton Abbott kindly got built for me so sit back and have a listen.
let's take a quick look at what makes all that noise. Okay guys, so what are we running in this engine? Um, we have got a 1330, so it originally started off 1275 um, a block, um, and then we bought it out to 1330. We've got a Charles Gracewood uh, 11 stud head, so that's your two additional studs on the end there. Um, we've got the high compression on this because the head's been skimmed. We've got the Powermax pistons. The head has been ported and polished. We've got a 1.5 volatip tip rockers just underneath the uh, carbon fiber, non-carbon fiber rather, carbon weasel uh, rocker cover there, full alloy uh, rocker cover. Carbon weasel, might I add, uh, basically is the chap, Ben, who has supplied all the carbon on this car. Now, I do really want to get a carbon, obviously, front grille moustache, and I am going to be changing the headlight bezels into black and the door handles also into black. So that's one of my projects to come. We've got it breathing quite heavily. I did originally have a breather off the back of the fuel pump because we've got an electronic fuel pump just down the back here. We took a breather off of there. Um, but what I ended up finding, it was just, it wasn't breathing enough. And because it's, I suppose, high compression, I don't know too much about this. It's definitely not electric, like my eye pace just there. Um, this seems to work lovely. So we've taken it off the, like the clutch bell housing cover there, breathing up into the rocker to catch as much oil as possible. And then breathing over into the inner wing, which we've got a catchment tank. Um, and that seems to do the job an absolute treat. When I was breathing it off the back of the fuel lift uh, pump, it was breathing over to a catchment bottle just here, and that was filling up far too quickly. Um, so that was something that we did. We've also put a proper race competition starter motor, and that has made a monumental difference in starting this car, because it's obviously quite high compression. We've got the electronic ignition system just inside there, um, which we can see just there on the label. We're running the four bladed fan with a two core radiator, just standard alternator. Cause again, it's really got to do is charge the battery to run the headlights. And then obviously we've got split fuses in here for the headlights, standard old fuel system, washer bottle, etc. So let's take a quick look at the brakes. Okay, so on the brakes, we've got the CAD four pot racing calipers. We've got twin vented, uh, or should we say vented 10 inch discs conversion, all new bushes. We've got polyurethane bushes on the front tie rod just there. Um, obviously front subframes all being painted in enamel. We've got the AVO adjustable front shocks on here, um, as well as obviously the hell braided green brake hoses. So uh, again, new CV joints, all new bushing, etc. cetera. Um, high lows on front as well as rear. And that's pretty much the brake setup. And I'll put a picture um, previously on when I showed the front uh, single stud conversion uh, of the calipers from the other side. So as you can see, a very nice snug fit. Braking on this car is phenomenal. I really do uh, like the braking, uh, very straight line braking. And the calipers, again, just look the trick and look the business. So let's take a quick look at the rear. OK, on the rear of this car, we've got super light mini fins on the rear. We've got the AVO adjustable shocks. Uh, we've got the high lows obviously in there as well. Again, uh, the subframes are all painted and primed and obviously uh, enamel painted. As you can see through the years, that's starting to come off a little bit. But other than that, in tip top condition, really, uh, we've got the Manaflow exhaust system. You can just see there in the background off my light. Um, and I've obviously got some tow hooks there in case you were to take it on a track day. Again, neoprene um bushes just up there on the subframe but yeah all looking quite trick really for the age uh when i obviously rebuilt this and uh, the condition it's all in like i say it's not concourse i do use it i do drive it and uh i do like things looking nice and i do get a bit uh fanatical but like i say when you drive it on these dirty dusty roads um you can't be too fussy so um yeah back to the outside Okay, so that is my 1977 Mini. Uh, what I would say is the only bits on this car that have been replaced, we've had two new doors, drivers and passenger doors. They were completely new because the other ones are absolutely shot. It's had a new front panel and two new front wings. Other than that, the rest of the car, 
so the roof quarter panels boot everything else the boot floor did have a little bit of a repair done on it um, about 20 years ago um, but that has stood the test of time and that's the reason why i'd love to get it to owen fabrication get it onto one of his jigs strip the thing to pieces rebuild it and obviously have a full race mini but i love my little car um a little bit different from your jaguar eye pace but it is what it is and uh, I am very grateful to own it and be very privileged to also own it. And uh, hopefully you like this video. So if you do, don't hesitate. Hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. Until the next video, your inaugural saying from me and the Ride Right Waxing and One Wheel Channel. We'll see you very soon.